Hi everyone, it's Camille and today we are going to modify our traders to broadcast orders to the pop up topic. We will be able then to, re to subscribe to that topic and store those orders inside the database. This is an 8th episode of the course dedicated to create a cryptocurrency trading bot in Elixir and if you want to follow along, read the description below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy! First, let's look at the diagram describing what are we going to do. From the top, currently we are using the Binance streamer to broadcast trade events to the PubSub topic. Moving down, subscription workers and naive traders are subscribing to that PubSub topic and naive traders are also submitting orders based on them. At that moment, we will broadcast those orders to the new orders PubSub topic. We will utilize the same subscription worker with new handler to store that data inside the database. Let's start by creating a new migration inside the data warehouse application. It will create a new orders table where we will store all orders placed by the naive strategy. The orders table will hold all the information that the Binance API gives us about our orders. We can start by copying the fields of the Binance orders struct as column names will be very similar. Our primary key will be the order ID generated by the Binance API. We can now create a schema module which will be almost exactly the same as our migration script. We can start again by copying the migration code and amend it to work as a schema. We can now move on to the naive trader. It needs to broadcast a message to the PubSub topic every time it places or retrieves an order. When we are placing the orders, we are getting the Binance order response tract. On the other hand, when we are retrieving the orders back, we are getting the Binance orders tract. Our broadcast function needs to convert one to another behind the scenes. Using a simple pattern match, we will check is it a Binance order response tract. If that's the case, we will first convert it to Binance orders tract and only then we will broadcast it to the pub subtopic. As usual, we will lowercase the symbol before using it as a part of our topic name. To 
convert the Binance Order Response Struct to the Binance Order Struct, we will first copy fields of the Order Struct and work our way from there. The Order Response is missing some details that Order has. To fix that, we will assign some hardcoded sane defaults. We can now move on to the subscriber worker inside the data warehouse app. We will copy over the order struct as we will need to convert it to the schema before inserting it into the database. To avoid writing two functions, one for update and another one for the insert path, we will use Postgres functionality that allows us to decide what should it do when an insert is a duplicate. Here we would like to replace all, which effectively makes this an absurd as we are now using the Binance tracks for pattern matching inside the data warehouse app, we need to add it to the depths. We need to remember to run Ecto Migrate to apply our migration. When testing the final code of this episode, I realized that a bug sneaked in inside the Binance mock module. When we are converting the fake order to the event, we should use an integer number for the trade ID field. Finally, before we will test the improvements added in this episode, we will modify symbol settings so the bot will trade at last. This will allow us to quickly test full cycle without need to wait for the price to change in our favor. Now let's see how this all works together by starting the IEX session. First, we will as previously start by storing the trade events using the data warehouse application. Next, we will use the same function to start storing orders data. This shows how this simple interface could possibly be expanded to handle multiple data types as we are already handling two different streams of data using it. Then we need to remember about starting the streaming and the trading on the same symbol. We can open a second terminal where we will check our Postgres database to confirm that indeed new rows are being upserted. We can see that both orders and trade events have been saved and, in case of orders, also updated in database. Okay, I will be honest with you, this episode wasn't really groundbreaking, but it's a last step for us to be able to bug test. Bug testing is a very big deal and this will basically solidify that your trading strategy, whatever that is, is feasible to be run in production. So we needed to finish whatever we were doing today and in the last episode um, to be able to get there. If you like those episodes, don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, uh, well, see you in the next episode where we will backtest some stuff. See ya.